Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Pacific Arc TIG Welding. My name's Dusty. I got a package in the mail from Shea Spec as well as from Michael Furick. Michael Furick is the company that does all the Furick cups and gas lenses for different TIG welding setups. And uh, Shea Spec does all the cosmetic back caps for TIG welding torches that you see everywhere. So he made me one up and sent it as well as uh, this kit from Michael Furick. So I thought today I would uh, set them up and show you how I set up and fine tune my TIG welding torch for stainless welding. So a quick look at the uh, back cap here. So this is from Shea Spec. If you go to Shea Spec, uh, I'll put his Instagram handle on screen right now, but his stuff is so cool. He makes all these different custom back caps for different types of torches. So you can actually get one for whatever torch you need it to fit on. But this is a large size. So I think this one's about four and a half inches long. Um, and yeah, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but the detail in these things is freaking sweet. You can see all the different way the light hits it. But yeah, these things are awesome. So it's mostly cosmetic, uh, but they do serve the function of holding your electrode uh, and it tightens down really nicely in your torch. Um, so these things, yeah, they serve a function, but honestly, they just look so cool. <laughs> Why wouldn't you want one? So again, that's at Shea Spec. So check out his Instagram and all the different stuff he has available on his website as well. I know he's just moving across country right now, so he might not be totally set up with an online shop yet, but hit it up, check it out, see what you like and uh, shoot him a message. Now, uh, I got a package from Furic Cups. So he hit me up and sent me a package full of uh, different uh, types of cups that he had. And uh, so I had a little assortment to go off of here. So we've got three different setups here basically, but they all kind of work off the same uh, internal collet setup. This is a basic gas lens setup for uh, your torch. Um, but basically these guys will work with most things that you have set up with the Furic cups. So for example, this one here, this is called a moose knuckle cup, I think, <laughs> good name. But this one is just meant to absolutely flood your weld with gas. So this will couple with this as well. And all that it does is it just screws on over top on your torch like so. So you get two screens in there and this second screen, I guess, helps it uh, spread a lot better uh, over your weld, which is absolutely amazing. When you see these things in action, uh, they, are, they are incredible to see how they actually work. I'll put a clip up right now. So shout out to Dabs Wellington. Uh, Dabs, what's up, dude? Um, thanks a lot for letting me use this clip, but he put this together. I don't know how he filmed it. I don't know what kind of smoke it is he's using here. I might have an idea. <laughs> But uh, you can see the gas spread. So you can see the difference between a traditional collet setup uh, and a traditional cup setup on that collet setup uh, and compare it on the left there to the Furic cup setup. You can just see an absolutely complete difference between how the two function uh, as far as giving you a gas coverage that will cover more of your weld, which I do know from experience. So welding around coping and pipe and stuff like that. Uh, when you use something that's a little smaller, like a smaller style cup, uh, a lot of the time when you move on to go around a corner, your gas coverage uh, won't reach around a corner from where you've just come from basically. So if you just weld it on this side and now you're over on this side, no longer can you get gas coverage to spread out that far. Whereas something, something like this moose knuckle cup or another one of the bigger screens, it gives you a better trailing gas. So what I mean by trailing gas is that the gas that will cover more of the weld that you moved away from. So basically you can move around corners a little bit and you'll still have a little bit more coverage. Uh, with straighter welds where you're welding flatter, you can definitely send a lot more uh, gas across the weld that you've just moved off from. So these things are really nice. They do require a higher CFH setup with your uh, gas regulator on your bottle. So unfortunately you will use a little bit more gas uh, to set this up. Uh, difference being when I use a traditional setup, so when I use like a ceramic cup or a glass cup or something like this, I'll set my torch up between maybe somewhere around 15 CFH coming out of my working pressure through my regulator. However, with something like this, a bigger screen, you want bigger coverage. So you're gonna knock that probably up to somewhere around 30 CFH. So again, you use a little bit more gas for a bigger screen setup. However, the coverage you're gonna get is absolutely unparalleled. You will not get as good a gas coverage with one of these cups as you will with a bigger screen like this Moose Knuckle one from Furic Cups. So this guy is the FUPA 12, so it's a number 12 size cup. FUPA, I'm not sure what that means. I gotta look that up. But yeah, this is a really nice setup. I've used this for a few things now, uh, and this thing totally gives you exactly what you want for gas coverage, it's awesome. The other Furic Cups he sent me were these number eights. So these number eights are sweet. I personally love these. I really, really like the ceramic cups. 
I don't really need to see too much uh, what's actually happening inside of the cup. I tend to use a lot of stick out, so my tungsten sticks out quite far. So something like a ceramic cup for me works just fine. But again, the glass is nice. Uh, unfortunately, if you do drop your torch with a gas cup on it, it will break, unfortunately. But these ceramic ones will break as well, but they're a little bit more durable. But again, either one of these setups is gonna be totally badass. You're gonna get great gas coverage with either of these guys. Okay, so I'm gonna fire up my Everlast 210 EXT here. Let it do its thing. So at the moment, uh, it's set up for aluminum, but I'm gonna flip it over to my other setting. So uh, on the EXT here, you can have uh, nine presets on it, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and I've got this one pimped. I've got this one pimped out for DC negative welding. So so for settings here, I'll basically be running uh, about half a second of pre-flow. See, I'll be running about uh, five amps minimum amperage, no upslope, uh, 85 amps, no downslope pretty low end amps and lots of post flow. So pretty basic setup for welding DC. So I got a little piece of scrap stainless here. Obviously you can see I've been kind of testing out different settings and stuff like that, but I definitely recommend getting something like this set up. Uh, that way when you go to actually practice on a piece of plate, you will be able to get it dialed in nicely. So first thing I'm gonna set up here is uh, the glass cup setup that I got with this. So the glass cup setup Basically, you need this O-ring adapter kit. So the O-ring basically slides over the outside of your existing outer collet body. And then what it does is when you put the glass over top of it, it just seals it so that when you push it back like that, that's how you get your proper gas seal like that there. Pretty trick little unit. So as you can see, this cup here, this uh, glass one works out to be a number eight size cup. Uh, I honestly use number eight for mostly everything I said. Like I said, with the ceramic and stuff like that, it's always the same size. An eight's perfect. You get lots of gas coverage with it, and it's not too big and bulky and doesn't get in your way. Okay, so I'm all set up here. Let's run a couple passes with the setup that I just showed you. Uh, set up with a standard 332 tungsten setup, and uh, for gas, I'm running about 15 CFH to my gas regulator. So I'll just run a pass here and see how the settings feel. So lots of post flow covering the weld. I think I turned out pretty good. Let's take a look at it. So as you can see, it sat down pretty nice. It usually takes a second for the first puddle or two to really sit down, but once the first little bit sat down here and I started getting rolling with it, it, uh, it started to blend out really, really nice. So as you can see, the gas coverage got nice and shiny there. Anytime you do a stainless weld and you finish and it looks like it all gray or dull or like no color, basically you want it as shiny as possible, whether the shine is like, you know, a lot of people say that the perfect shine is a gold color or a straw color. That means that there's been zero oxidization that's happened. Uh, it's a good gas coverage. You're gonna get some color and stuff like that sometimes. Uh, if you move on with a really hot weld, you move quickly away from it, you're gonna get a little bit of color, which uh, honestly, I really like. Uh, some people will call it an oxide and some people will say that it's not ideal. Kind of subjective opinion. I guess it depends on what you're using it for, for sure. But uh, as far as what we're doing here today, this looks pretty good. It's nice and clean, nice and shiny. The wetted edge on either side is nice and straight. Uh, so that's a nice little pass there. I'm happy with those setups. All right, so the next one I'll do here is I'll pop this O-ring off and then set up the number eight ceramic cup. So I got my stick out here. It's about maybe three eighths of an inch, a little more than a quarter. So it, uh, it's a good amount for me. I like being able to see, uh, so I have it sticking out quite far. And again, these lenses I know are really, really good. So they're gonna give me a good gas coverage, even though the stick out's a little bit further out. Okay, so same setups, essentially. Uh, the 332 setup on the inside is exactly the same. My gas is set up the same, 15 CFH. Aside from that, the only thing we've changed is the cup. And we're gonna get rolling here. I'll do a pass with this one. Okay, here we go.
Still lots of post flow. There we go, that was a nice one. Let's take a look at it. Ooh, baby, that was a nice one. Look at that color. So that's a really, really good indication that my gas coverage was pretty bang on with that one. So we didn't get a lot of blue, we didn't get any greens or purples on this one. It's mostly just gold and straw color. A little bit of red in there, but uh, basically what this means is that our gas coverage was a really, really good setup so that uh, it kept a lot of the oxygen and stuff like that away from our weld. Uh, so we didn't get in any oxide forming on the weld itself. So overall you can see it's nice and shiny. Uh, it's exactly what you're looking for uh, when you're running stainless. Okay, so I'll flip it over and try our third setup here. I'm gonna do the moose knuckle. So this guy here, we'll see what our stick out ends up being. But again, because we're running two cup or because we're running two screens now uh, and our gas coverage is gonna need to be a lot more because we have a bigger cup orifice. And I'm gonna pull my stick out a little bit further too. Okay, so our gas has turned up to 30 CFH now. There you go, I'm using my own gas. I'm going through a lot for this demo for you guys. <laughs> okay, so aside from our cup being different, everything else is exactly the same with 332 setup. Uh, a little bit more stick out this time as you can see. Uh, but here we go, let's give her a whirl. Now you can hear way more gas coming out of it. Oh yeah, look at that, that's freaking crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay, so get a load of this. <laughs> look at the difference in gas coverage with that last one. So that moose knuckle cup has obviously a bigger orifice and we had more gas coming out of it. Overall, all three of these welds, I'm totally fine with. Uh, any work that I inspect at my job, uh, I'm okay with color. Um, obviously we want to have more of what we're looking at on this third one here. Uh, this third one, there is no oxidization. It is completely spotless. It's uh, got a perfect wetted edge on either side. And you can see it's just like, it's like a mirror. Like it's just, there's no oxide on it at all. It's a completely spotless weld. So you can see the difference between the three different welds there. That's crazy. I'm really happy that I got a chance to try all three of those out. So there's the three cups right there, as so you can see the work that they've done. It's uh, pretty wild. I'm really, really happy I got a chance to try all these out. Needless to say, I'm definitely gonna be using this guy and this guy. This guy, if I feel like I have an extra tank of gas, I need to burn for some reason, but <laughs> your welds are gonna come out super, super clean. Pretty cool to see the difference between the three. So for everybody that was uh, interested in that one, I really hope you enjoyed it. It's crazy to see the difference between these three cups. So even though all three cups are a great setup, so if you have a nice clean tungsten, a clean screen, you're checking your gas levels and everything, you're gonna get a good weld no matter what. Um, even the one with color, obviously, like I said, it's still fine. Some people will say that color is oxide, which they're right, it is but it doesn't mean that the weld is faulty. In some applications it may be, uh, and again, don't take my word for it as far as what different codes cover. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm just saying that the function of this weld, even though it has color on it, is still gonna work fine. Um, but as you can see, when we switch to the different cups here, like the ceramic cup setup, as well as the moose knuckle setup, you've got adequate gas coverage with the, with the glass cup, but you can see also, the other cups provided just unbelievable gas coverage with the three different ones there. So Michael Furyk across the board, all these cups are absolutely amazing. I definitely recommend that you guys go to the website, check it out, get yourself something nice. Uh, if, if you're doing anything with TIG welding on stainless that you want to look nice, get good gear. You don't need much else. Like a good machine is great, but if you don't know how to set up a torch properly and you don't have good torch hardware, uh, clean tungstens and stuff like that, it's not really gonna help you out. So I definitely recommend if you want some good gear, go to the Furic website. I'll put it on screen again now. Um, check out all the stuff. He shipped here real fast. It was really quick, so I really appreciate it. So, uh, and again, Shea Spec, uh, go to Shea Spec's Instagram. Check out all those products, super nice stuff. So. So again, I'm really, really happy. I got a chance to try these uh, products out. Um, and honestly, this is an honest review. If I wasn't totally happy with any of these products, 
I would say so. <laughs> and you can trust me on that. I'm not getting paid anything for these episodes. So go check out those websites, give the gear a whirl, uh, see how it works with your machine and send me work. Have you, do you get like in the comments below, if you use some of this gear, if you've had experience with it, comment below and let me know how it went. Uh, let me know what different gas levels you use. Uh, I'm, I really like learning. So although I have a show about TIG welding, I still learn every time I do something. And I love talking to people on the internet. I love hearing what different setups people use and what different setups people have had uh, success with. So please hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what your setup's like. But again, I thank you a lot for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, taking the time to watch these demos. I really enjoy breaking down gear and talking about setups and stuff like that. So if you stuck with this all the way to this point, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, be sure uh, if you haven't checked out the rest of the videos on my channel, I do a bunch of different crazy TIG welding stuff. I do informational stuff like this. I do how to's and tutorials as well. And probably my favorite thing to do is the crazy art welding projects I do. I do you'll see them just check them out <laughs> but aluminum stainless i do all kinds of stuff so if you haven't checked those out already please check out the rest of the videos on my channel subscribe like share do all that stuff you know the drill uh, it helps the channel grow the more people that watch these videos the more videos i will make so thank you very much for watching this one i hope you enjoyed it have a good one peace